Hello, welcome to my shop again. Today I'm going to do a pet urn to uh, uh, remember my son's uh, little dog that died and we're going to do some embellishment in that. I put a little uh, uh, puppy paw on there from, from uh, Otis and uh, so we'll, uh, we'll be making this today. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to just take a piece of uh, ash here. Uh, the old emerald ash borer is taking down a lot of ash trees in the area, and it's got a strong grain character so that it'll do what I uh, want with my urn. So uh, we're going to put this on between centers and on the balance point, like I do in all my vessels. Okay, as always, let's get our face shield on, and we're going to get the speed of the lathe up, and I'm going to go make my pass right into the side of the tree, as I usually do. I'm going to prepare for my face plate. I'm not going to use a chuck on a hollow form. It's a, a, a weak link. So I got a relatively long piece uh, with a small diameter. A face plate is going to be a much stronger hold for it. I'm going to make the, uh, uh, the bottom of my urn here, which is kind of backwards. I usually use this as the top, but now this is going to be the bottom. I need to have access to the bottom so that I can put... Uh, a lid on the bottom that's going to sit uh, against the table. This shape will hide the fact that it's uh, an urn. Uh, it won't have an obvious lid on top of it. Uh, so we have to prepare that while I'm on the same axis. And so I'm doing this kind of upside down. Uh, so this is the bottom. So uh, we're going to just open up this middle with a bowl gouge first. We can actually go backwards and line up the bevel here to make a little shoulder in here. <clears throat> so leave enough shoulder here so that I can put a, a screw in that. So we'll leave a little fat area down here and then we'll hollow it out and uh, make it thinner in the top so it's not so heavy. But uh, that way it'll give me some place to put some screws. <clears throat> okay, so I don't know exactly how deep I'm going to go here because my top's not done yet. I can't take my top down to a small vessel or it's going to come out here and vibrate. So um, I'm going to drill my drill hole short of where I think my top's going to be. Okay, let's start hollowing. I've got uh, the boring bar set up and I'm just going to uh, hog off the middle of this first and get the middle out of it before I start measuring the wall. Uh, I'll give you a couple views here. This is just a long view or just shows me just standing at the lathe and, and only need one hand. The lathe and the tool is going to do all the work for me. 
Can't see very well there what's happening, but uh, you get the long view. Let's put the other camera in here. And then you can see the shavings coming off here. I'm using the Hunter Carbide tool because of its efficiency. I want shavings, not sawdust. And uh, this is very dry. I needed to do it dry because I'm doing a lid on it. So now I'm just going to get some of the middle of the wood out just to uh, give me room uh, for the shavings and uh, get some of the waste wood out uh, quick and easy. I'm going to use uh, my other hand now because I can have a little bit more strength to uh, be a little more aggressive with it. Because these the because because these cuts are so easy, I can start to take bigger and bigger shavings with it, and uh, get the wood out in a hurry. All right, let's uh, show you what's happening here. Uh, I've made the little recess so that my bottom lid will fit on there. I've left myself some room for some screws to uh, secure the bottom lid and I've only finished the outside down part way. I didn't finish the bottom which is going to be nice and rounded here because I need support for it. I can't take it down to a small foot and go out and hollow. I'll get vibration issues. So right now I'm going to put the laser on and we're going to start to undercut this shoulder back in here behind the uh, where the screws are going to go. And we're going to measure this all the way down and clean that up. And now we're going to set the laser so that we're going to measure in this area just behind where my little fat spot is for the screws. And let's set this probably, oh, maybe about uh, 3 16 something like that. Okay, so I'm going to set it on the line. Make sure that that gap now is perpendicular through the wall. Now when I go in here, again, it's just going to be fingertip control. I just use one hand here and go in and start measuring. Right about here, I want that laser to disappear. So I'm going to get rid of the waste wood behind first a little bit. Now, when the laser disappears like that, my wall thickness, the gap is left behind. So now I'm just going to take my fingertips and I'm going to clean up the, the little uh, shoulder behind uh, the screw uh, flat where the screws are going to go in. And uh, just taper it into the rest of that surface. Okay, so now that whole top is done. Now all I need to do is go measure, measure, measure. Let's watch that. Stop. 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 Okay, now I'm all measured there for about a half inch. And I would go back and I clean up the tool marks. But uh, really, nobody's going to see it in here but me once I shut this thing up. So I'm not going to worry about tool marks in there. I just want the wall thickness uniform. So I still need the laser to do that. This fairly straight uh, surface here didn't need any laser adjustment because the gap is perpendicular to the wall the whole way. But now when I start to tuck around this corner, I'm going to have to reposition the laser so that that gap is perpendicular to the wall. All right. So now there's my angle. You see where the laser is. is not quite in the right place. So we're going to move that over on the line okay so I can tuck in around that corner and make sure that the lasers 
perpendicular through the wall there. The gap is what was what's doing the measurement. So as I'm working down in that area, got to make sure I'm measuring accurately. Now oh, that probably took me a uh, total, uh, I edited out most of that, but that took me maybe uh, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to hollow that out. Uh, no big deal, happened pretty quickly. But now the outside shape uh, is done part way and the inside shape is done all the way down in there. So now I need to go out, take my uh, boring bar off and we'll finish uh, the top shape only kept this area in in support so that I could go out and hollow so now I can get rid of all I still can't uh, take it down too small uh, but I can get rid of a lot of this waste wood so let's do that quickly all right so I'm gonna come back here just behind where that little shoulder is, I'm going to pick up a shaving. I'm going to line up my bevel with the existing service so I know I'm going in the right direction before I make my cut. Now I'm going to take a very slow cut. Speed of the lathe is going fast. My cut direction is going slow across the tool rest and leaves a nice clean cut that way. Now you can now you can see I've just got a, a big enough area to hold it here so it's still secure. Then I'm going to go back into hollow and I'm just going to hollow out this last little oh, half inch, three quarters of an inch that's left over in there and uh, make that inside nice and round. I want to make a uniform wall thickness so it feels good. I don't have a heavy spot or uh, uh, any uh, uneven walls to make it feel funny. Here in the center and then working my over the over to the side without cutting that sidewall. Just clean up that bottom. Just so that there's not a fast spot in there, a thick wood in there. See if we can't get a little picture of the inside there. You can see even though I didn't really pay attention to getting two marks off, pretty clean in there and a nice rounded bottom. I made a little recess in the waste wood there to hold it between centers. It's going to shoulder right there and center it. Uh, use the robust uh, live center. It's got a big hunkin' 3 8 inch uh, pin in it. So we're going to scooch that out. That'll give us more access to uh, getting in the little nub in the bottom. Very light cuts. Slow and easy. Don't want to tax this, it's just driving with friction. Can make this nub relatively small because it's in grain. And take one more cleaning up cut here. Very slow pace across the tool rest. Line up the bevel first. Slow pace across the tool rest. This is actual speed, not slowed down in slow motion or anything. And uh, makes a very, very clean cut with very little sanding. I'm going to show you a little sanding here. Watch how quickly I go through. I'm going to go through one of the grits for you just to show how quickly I go through it. Sharp sandpaper is the key. So I'm using sharp sandpaper in one place and then when that gets used very quickly it's dull. I'm going to take new sandpaper and sand with sharp sandpaper. Need to measure this inside. and transfer it over to here. I've got a thin piece of wood. This is uh, put on here between centers on the uh, uh, on side grain so that it'll hold up to be the little lid that I'm going to put in the bottom. Perfect fit. Just a little bit loose. And that'll give it some room to expand or contract and 
atmospheric conditions in case it does start to warp a little bit uh, even though it's dry wood so now that I know it's the right diameter I'm going to shape this inside just a little bit to give it some thickness uh, just because the uh, the rim is only going to have about an eighth of an inch of, of thickness here so I want the uh, the middle of the uh, lid to be a little bit thicker than that so I'm just going to make a little bit of a dome for that just add a little bit of thickness there okay. now we need to reverse it you guys that use chucks probably could just grab this in a chuck it'd be a done deal but I don't use chucks so I find a different way All right, I still have my scrap block that I started with. This is the, the, the butt end of the, uh, the piece of wood that I started with. So I'm just going to clean this up. Make a nice little flat surface on there. So when I have my, my finished inside, it can just be held up there with my tailstock again and I'll have access to the bottom okay I'm gonna put my pin back in my live center because I've got the center point from my drive center which is centering everything so when I bring that tailstock up it should line up pretty good and I'm just gonna force it up there with with friction I want to take relatively light cuts and small cuts. So I'm just driving it with the friction. Carve this little nub off, sand it off. Okay, shear scrape again, handle down so I can cleanly clean that up. Okay, so that's the inside. That's the outside. A little bit of detail. All you got to do is carve that little nub off, and we'll be ready to put some finish on it. Then I've used a, a liming wax to kind of whiten it a, a little bit. Uh, the dog was uh, black and white, and so I wanted to have a white... Uh, uh, reference to it. So I used a liming wax to whiten the pores and give it a little white uh, tint. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little puppy paw in the surface by texturing that area and then painting it black so we'll have a little black and white contrast going to take just a, uh, a, a vibrating engraver so uh, watch me here I'm gonna make little tiny circles and we're just going to texture the area that I want colored and that'll give it a little bit of a relief from the 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 more polished uh, rest of the vessel and it'll the light will shine on that differently it'll look like it's carved but it really isn't carved it's just textured now each circle is going to overlap each other so after a while you don't see the circles you just see the shape So we're just going to paint it black here, and then the texture is going to stand out. Okay, here's the finished product, and uh, get you a little close-up of it here uh, with the white little uh, 
liming wax on there gives it a little white character to it because the dog was black and white. Okay, the bottom on it. So, uh, fun little project. Uh, didn't take much time at all. And uh, don't forget to subscribe when you leave and support our sponsors, Doug Thompson and Mike Hunter Tools. And uh, see you next time.